I love Limerick.com. <laughs> <laughs>Leanne Moore and you're watching I Love Limerick.com in association with Limerick Leader TV and we're here this evening in Dolan's Warehouse and I'm joined by the very lovely Niamh Kavna. <laughs> well you've been here now for a couple of hours. Yes. Have you managed to see any more this time than you did last time? Yes I was wandering around the town today. I actually came in very late last night from the lovely Mill Street and uh, I purposely came here last night so I could spend the day here and I dandered about the town which was hive and it's fantastic and I, so I'll definitely be coming back. So you mentioned you've done um, a load of the Pride events around the country. Yes, I have. And um, judging by your Facebook page and everything, you have a huge following. <laughs> I know. What does your uh, your gay following mean to you? Oh my God, I love them. I just, they are so good to me and they have been over the years. At, we we meet in many events and you know every year I visit Eurovision land you know for things but quite apart from just the Eurovision fans I also meet lots of gay friends when I'm out and we're at gigs and things they are fantastic wonderful supporters they just a hundred percent they're like proper you know like a, a, a guy you know a person who follows a football team good bad or indifferent yes, that's the way yeah. they would be and they totally are honest with you about what they think and you know you have to Maybe take it on the chin occasionally, but not frock. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, I love them dearly. And, you know, I we, we spend a lot of time together. And they they absolutely and utterly add to my life 100%. Yeah. And I, I just think that, you know, I don't necessarily think of it as the gay following. I just think that these are my fans who I yeah. love. The last time that our, our paths crossed mm -hmm. was in uh, the late, late no, uh, studio, yeah. in RT studios. Yeah, so and beautiful. I remember you walked in the door and I and I nearly wanted to bombard you with, in your eyes. <laughs> I nearly just, just like that. Like, <laughs> just, like that. <laughs> just like that right there. <laughs> I nearly did. I'm a bit disappointed uh, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you didn't actually? No, but do you ever get that? Do you ever get All people the time. just yeah, singing, yeah. singing the lyrics? Yeah. Actually, not so much now, but when, it, well, a little bit more now, obviously, now that I'm back kind of uh, in the focus for that. But when yeah. I first won, my favourite thing that used to happen, and it happened so often, it was really quite embarrassing, but you had young girls who came. And uh, I mean, I'm talking about six and seven year olds. And oh. six and seven years already start up. In your eyes. And you know, <laughs> and you desperately wanted them to get to the middle eight because you know they were going to regret it so much. <laughs> they were like, and they said, oh. I just loved every second of it. Listen, you know, I've had many people sing things, and, and then of course, we always have the I see it in your eyes, and I gave them plenty of song titles they could use, and you know, and titles of ads and things. So, you know, let's be honest, it's uh, it's really gratifying that anybody would ever know or would take interest in what you do. So even if they're shouting abuse at you, it's, it's worth something. <laughs> well, it was definitely just my favourite Eurovision moment as well mm. of all time. I told you that as well before. Yeah, I do. Um, I, do love, I do love that song. But mm. I also, sitting in the green room on the night of March the 5th or 6th mm. of this year, <laughs> I think the entire place, you know yourself, it was buzzing backstage in the, at the Late Late Show. Yeah, it was. We, were, we, we, we had a lovely was. group. We had yeah. a really, everybody was fantastic on that show. There was only one time that that whole buzz completely died and you wouldn't have, have seen that because you were actually on stage performing at the time oh. the entire green room just came to a lull everybody was focused on the on the tv screen i mean what did it feel like at that <laughs> moment you the, the crowd in the actual <coughs> studio was just going crazy yeah well you know the funny thing is i kind of walked out on stage and i'd watched everybody else do because you know the first time i did the euro song i was first on so i was mm. able to sit at the back and i think suzanne bushnell was on second so the two of us commenced our light refreshments then um, uh, so whereas this time I had to wait until the very end and it doesn't help your nerves much kind of hanging about like get a bit dry and, and uh, so I walked out on the stage for the, the late late and I was very excited because I got, you know over the years I've got to know the crew and the people but also you looked out into the audience and there was millions of fans and family of everybody and you know I felt through the whole show I was so proud of everybody and everything that was done on that night. Mm. You know, 
I just felt so glad to be a part of it, you know, and I was so happy that people responded to it, you know, because oh. it makes me feel something when I sing it. But I desperately feel that the rest of the group, the rest of you, were so good too. I just, I loved watching everybody and being with you so much like those oh. few days. And so uh, to me, it was like we all went in the end. You then went to Norway. I did. To the Tell lovely us a little Oslo. bit about the highlights of Well, of, uh, Oslo was fab. I can't say any different. It was fab. It was a totally different experience from Mill Street. It wasn't the home representative and all, but, you know, it was so brilliant. We kind of swanned over. And, of course, for the two weeks, I was Dame Neve, being the oldest lady on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I tried desperately to find an older singer than me on their songs, <laughs> and it didn't occur. <laughs> I was the actual official oldest singer on the show. Um, now, there was other people on the stage, but I was the oldest singer. But uh, the thing was, for the two weeks, um, I was dubbed Dame Neve because I was the returning <laughs> winner. And we had a really brilliant time. It, it was a beautiful place to be. Uh, and it was so, such a bigger show in, in the sense of there was 20,000 people in the hall as opposed mm. to the 2,000 previously. But, you know, the job was still the same. It just was mm. longer. And in fairness, I am 17 years older, so I, I did have to lie down a little bit more often. Um, but we did we did have a fantastic time. <laughs> Which did you prefer, 93 or 2010? That's a very difficult question, actually, because yeah. they're two completely different experiences. Um, Mill Street was extremely emotional. I've just come from there, so mm -hmm. I really, I really got back into it. I walked into the Greenlands Arena, Arena on Friday morning for the first time since '95. Oh. I saw River Dance there, but it was the first time I kind of walked in the way it was the first time I walked into yeah. it and it was extremely emotional for me because oh. I could see the things that were there that weren't you know um, and the people were stopping their cars in the street to say hello it's hard to replace Mill Street I think in a way 93 was more personal of course you know course. Uh, it was definitely much more personal um, but 2010 was a fantastic experience too and in a way it was a very easy way for me to be involved and it was such a fantastic experience but I missed my family of course so much at least here I saw my family for brief moments yeah, yeah. although you don't see them much when you're doing your work but <laughs> you know I they had a little go of me every now and then you know a little you got an odd thing and you would see people who knew you so yeah I think I, I would have to say Mill Street from the point of view as a personal experience it was fantastic you are uh, Eurovision um, royalty in mm -hmm. my book at this stage mm -hmm. you really are and in everybody's book um, will you be doing um, anything for the Eurovision selection maybe next year or like, I'd, like I've no idea. And Johnny Logan yeah, doing I've no idea. I tell you one thing I wouldn't want to do is sit on a panel to judge people who are going to do it next year. Mm. I, I don't agree with that. I think everybody should just present their song and let the public decide on it. Mm. That's my opinion. Um, I don't mind coming along to support them on the night. I'll hang around the green room and uh, go, I'm so glad it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> you no. just want to be there for the crowd. Yes, I do. <laughs> I don't want to swan around like the returning winner that I am. <laughs> I think I'd like when I'm 80. Um, <laughs> just a long Which time away. years away. Long time away. <laughs> anyway, um, but when I'm 80 and my grandchildren come, if my children ever have children, um, but you know, when children come, I can say, I won the Eurovision so I was on the Eurovision so <laughs> And for them to actually know what that was, yes. you know, because if it doesn't survive, they're going to say, is that the same as the Nuremberg trials? And they go, huh? <laughs> or what is even worse now, I say, have you ever seen Magnum P.I. or Charlie's Angels? And they don't even know what that is. And I'm traumatized. So the Eurovision has to be surviving. So I have some connection with the youth. <laughs> 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 you mentioned your family and yes. you're, you're obviously away quite a lot especially at the mm -hmm. moment yeah, you're, sure. you're everywhere I mean you just came from Cork you're mm -hmm. now in Limerick mm -hmm. um, and you're two little boys mm -hmm. and, and your husband and everything how, how are you dealing with the work and the home situation well over the summer now yeah, and I took a lot of time off from work I, I mean I, I blocked it I went I would go out for a weekend and work like an Egypt and then I'd come back in and I spent about five weeks um, in Donegal disappearing off the face of the earth I got a lot of flack for two in, from the Facebook gang but you know the thing is uh, my kids are and my husband are so essential to me that I just don't see how you can't have both so um, and then also um, during the summer when I worked I let them come with me 
places. So, you know, it wasn't so bad. Yeah, it was good. Of course, of course. And then, um, but now you see they're playing hooky the last three or four days, eating takeouts, I'd say. <laughs> and uh, when I drive all the way back from Limerick to the lovely Carrick Fergus tomorrow, uh, there will be four loads of uh, washing, I'm pretty sure, that will need to be washed and dried by the time Sunday, Monday morning comes for school. Of and, course, of you know, course. The, the delightful thing about that is that reminds me that as divatastic as I am here, I'm still going to have to be a mammy when I go home. And that just, that just makes you very real. That makes you a person. It's great. Well, you know, I know, Leanne. You see, when I was your age, my mammy did my washing. <laughs> <laughs> so the last time I did Eurovision was easy. No, it's like, I'm going, so, I'm going around somewhere. I've been doing my own since no. I was at least 16. I know, you see. I, I wish I was better like you. But now, now I do lots of washing now, so that's okay. The burning question then sure. is what's like what's next for you i mean this has been an amazing year mm-hmm. and um and i just want to know you know what's next for neve Kavanagh? next for neve Kavanagh is touring i'm at the moment getting the shekels together i did read somewhere i got a hundred thousand pounds <laughs> uh, my bank is unaware of that as 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 am i uh, to make an album so i'm i'm earning money and um looking to record i have some nice songs and um i'm very excited about it and hopefully by next at the beginning of the year now I'm hoping to start touring the theatres around um, I've been doing a lot of the Pride events and a lot of stuff work like that and you know it's been fantastic because it's all new stuff opening out mm. to me you know that I wouldn't have done before and realistically then I also have to prepare my son for his transfer test uh, he's he's doing that um, at probably November 12 months but they start preparing so that will be the new year so oh, wow. realistically that's what we'll be doing you know and I hope that when I'm you know watching you on your world tour in about four or five years uh, I'll be touring my little tours around and recording as you were unaware of the uh, 100,000 I'm unaware of the world tour it's coming Leanne and there's no doubt about it if we say it it has to be true that's just it Dame Neve says it it's true Neve thank you so much for joining us today thank you Leanne and thank you for joining us you've been watching I Love Limerick.com with the beautiful Neve Kavanagh